Hello everybody, welcome to KubeCon. Uh, I hope you're still awake, it's been a busy day. Uh, I'm James Strack and I'm going to talk to you about Jenkins X today, so let, let's get started. Um, now, Kubernetes is awesome, right? We all know Kubernetes is awesome. It's amazing technology. It's got an incredible community, and it's just really, really useful, right? It's awesome. One of the big challenges, though, with Kubernetes is how do you use it, right? Uh, how do you actually use it to do development and develop software well? We're increasingly all trying to become high-performing teams and to go fast. So we all want to do microservices. We all want to spin up projects all the time and experiment. We want to go fast. We want CI and CD. We want to continuously deliver value. The, the challenge, though, is how to figure out how to take Kubernetes and all of this different stuff in the Kubernetes ecosystem, put it all together, and make a really awesome CI and CD uh, ecosystem. Now, if you're a team right now trying to go fast, you've got all these kind of things to figure out. You need to figure out how to set up Kubernetes and create your own cluster. You need to figure out how to set up multiple environments. You need to figure out how to set up Docker files for all of your apps. Then you need to figure out, do I go YAML or do I go Helm? Then you need to figure out what your pipelines look like. Um, then you need to figure out, how do I get lots of uh, promotion working between my environments so I can go from development to testing to staging to production? And then once you've got all that, then you need feedback so that you know when things go to staging and you know when things go to production, and you can do rollbacks and all that, that kind of stuff. You might have heard of the new coolness GitOps, where you put all of your operational configuration into Git, which means everything's audited and versioned and all of that kind of stuff. Uh, the WeaveWorks folks came up with a GitOps name, which I think is awesome. Um, I think most of us kind of do this now, right? We put all of our uh, operational configuration in Git, so everything's backed up. If ever you lose your cluster, you can just recreate it and all the configuration's in there. If anybody messes anything up, you can just do a Git revert, right? So using GitOps is awesome. And then finally, we need to actually deliver some business value, you know, do our actual jobs and write some software uh, and make value to our customers. So we've got all this stuff to worry about uh, as developers, and really we're kind of too busy doing the real stuff we should be doing, delivering actual our product and our, and our service. So this is where Jenkins X comes in. So Jenkins X is really trying to help you do all of that stuff, right? Um, now, what we kind of want to do is turn all of this CI and CD and stuff into just an appliance that works. So you as a developer can just write code and stuff just happens, right? So you don't have to mess around with Docker files. You don't have to tweak Helm charts. You don't have to write Jenkins files. You just create apps and, and be happy. And all of this stuff, CI and CD, just kind of happens for you, right? So that's the idea. Uh, so what does Jenkins X do? It automates the installation and configuration of a whole bunch of different tools. Um, so there's, there's obviously Kubernetes, then there's Jenkins as well, but there's other tools like Scaffold, um, Helm, um, and, well, a bunch of stuff, Monocular. There's a whole range of different bits of software that we need to really do CI and CD well on Kubernetes. So we automatically install and configure all this stuff, so you don't have to mess around trying to get Jenkins to talk to Nexus or any of that kind of crap. It, it does it all for you. So it installs your stuff. It also gives each... Um, it automates the generation of all of your pipelines. So whenever you want to create an app or import an app, um, it just sets up the CI and CD pipelines for you. Uh, it adds a Docker file if there isn't a Docker file already. It adds a Jenkins file if you haven't written a Jenkins file. It adds a Helm chart if you haven't written a Helm chart. So it automates the setup of your applications. Um, and then it basically automates the, the uh, promotion through testing, staging, and production. Okay? Uh, and then there's lots and lots of feedback, which you'll, you'll see in a moment. Feedback is crucial. To go fast, really, we need to do continuous delivery, so be continuously coding and changing things and getting that to production as quick as possible. But we need the feedback loop to make it worthwhile so we know when things go well or things go badly, and you can make changes to constantly improve. So that's what Jenkins X is trying to do for you. So how do you get started on this Jenkins X thing? Uh, what do you need to do to get started? Um, so please don't try this right now, because I'm going to hopefully use the Wi-Fi soon to do a demo. But after my talk, you can type this in to download the Jenkins X binary. So there's Jenkins X has a binary called JX, uh, which is the command line tool you use for uh, interacting with Jenkins X. Right? So you need to get this binary, not right now, like in about half an hour, download the binary onto your laptop. Um, if you use a Mac, just use Brew. If you use Linux, copy and paste that. Or you can go to the website and download the binary and pop it in your path. So you need the Jenkins X binary, then, you ne then the next thing you need is a Kubernetes cluster with Jenkins X installed on it. Um, now we support uh, Amazon, Google, and Microsoft's clouds. Um, 
so that we have a command, jx, create cluster. You then type the kind of cloud you wish to use. So AWS for Amazon, AKS for Azure, GKE for Google, using Google's container engine. Um, we've got a few other options. If you really, really want, you can use Minikube on your laptop, but it's kind of not real, so we'd rather you use a real cloud. Uh, you don't want to shut your laptop down and your entire CI, CD infrastructure kind of stops, right? You use the cloud for good. Um, so these, any one of these three commands spins up a brand new cluster of Kubernetes and puts Jenkins X on top of it, right? Um, if you already have a cluster to hand that someone's given you or something or configured for you, maybe you're, you're, you want all of this on premise, so you, you've used KubeSpray or KubeADM or something like that on premise, uh, just use JX install and that will use whatever Kubernetes cluster you're already talking to. So if you can use KubeCuddle, KubeCTL to talk to a cluster, J JX install will just work on that cluster. Um, we do prefer our back to be enabled, and um, we do want an ingress so we can talk into the cluster to do things. Uh, but apart from that, it should work with most kind of modern-ish Kubernetes clusters. Okay? So it's basically one command to install, and that gives you everything you need in the box, which is nice and simple. Here's a little demo. I'll, I'll play it really quickly. Uh, a little demo of using uh, installing a cluster. So we type JX create cluster, in this case GKE. It then asks you a couple of things like how many nodes do you want, wish to use, how big a node do you want to use in your node pool. Then it basically spins up a Kubernetes cluster. Um, this video is slightly sped up, right? It, it takes two to three minutes usually on GKE. It can take a little bit longer on some of the other clouds, but GKE is normally quite quick. Um, then it installs Jenkins X. Then the last thing it does, you can just see this last bit, it sets up two Git repositories. I'll come back to those Git repositories in a minute, but those are your environments. Those are the Git repositories for doing GitOps. So that's your staging environment and your production environment. We'll, we'll come back to those in a minute. So it's basically pretty quick. You type one command in half an hour, type that one command, and you can have your own uh, Kubernetes cluster with Jenkins X on top of it, okay? Which is cool. Um, so now, uh, what does that give me? So each team gets their own development environment or home environment where we install a bunch of tools. So we install things like Jenkins and Nexus and monocular and various other bits and pieces. So you get your own um, namespace with your own sets of tools in there. So you run Jenkins and stuff. Um, we give you a Jenkins master by default and an elastic pool of Jenkins pods, build pods, which is where the pipelines run. So there's no more waiting for this huge build pipeline to kind of you know, unqueue. Um, also, each team gets their own Jenkins master. So you just see your jobs, right? You don't look at Jenkins and have 50 gazillion builds for everybody in your organization. You get your own Jenkins master with your own builds inside it. And you get your own elastic slave pool, right? That's all, always available. Um, each team also gets their own staging environment and production environment. So lots of different teams can all be working in parallel and there's no kind of conflict with each other, right? Each team can release anything to their uh, staging environment or production environment whenever they wish. There's no like big long meetings to agree when you can go to production. Each team can just go fast if they wish, right? Uh, so there we go. So that's, that's what Jenkins X gives you. Now let's use it. Uh, so now I'm going to try use conference Wi-Fi um, on Google Cloud and GitHub. So this, this, could, this totally could work. Uh, we'll see what happens. So let me go to a shell. I'll, I'll do most of this in a, in a command line shell. Uh, oh, let me make that a bit smaller. Okay, so I'm, I'm praying to the demo gods as I, as I type. Uh, let's see how well this goes first. Yeah, oh, that's a good start. Okay, the internet seems to be working. So these are the environments I have right now, right? So JX is just a command line that let, gives you loads and loads of commands. So this is all the environments I have. So I have a, a, my development environment. I have a personal edit environment where I can run my own stuff. I have a staging environment and I've got a production environment. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create an app for you. We're going to see it go from uh, testing to staging and then eventually production. So I'm going to type JX create quick start. Um, and I'm going to say, yeah, use my username. Uh, and it's going to give me a bunch of different quick starts. I'm going to pick this. This is KubeCon, and Kubernetes is Go all the way down. So I'm going to stick to Go today for my demos. We do support you know, Spring and Maven and Gradle and lots of other programming languages. But I'm going to stick to uh, Go for this demo. And let's call the app Go KubeCon. That's quite a nice name. Go KubeCon. Cool. So it's going to create a bunch of source code on my laptop. Uh, now it's going to ask me, 
do I want to initialize a Git repository for this code? Yes, please, because it's not in Git yet. So those are the files that it's created. So there's not too much there, a little Go file and a couple of readmes and a couple of scripts. Uh, what's the commit message? That looks fine to me. Now it's going to run the build pack, which is going to look at this project, figure out what it is. It's Go. It needs a Docker file. It needs a Helm chart. It needs a pipeline. So it's going to add a bunch more files in there. So it's added. Uh, you can see it's added a Docker file, it's added a Jenkins file, it's added a, some Helm charts, and right at the bottom there's a scaffold YAML. Scaffold is a tool from Google that uh, builds Docker images and redeploys them. Um, Helm is a tool from Microsoft that does packaging. It's a package manager for Kubernetes. So we're using Helm for packaging, and we're using scaffold for building. Right? Um, and then it's going to say, do I want to use my username to import into GitHub? Yeah, that sounds good. Which organization? I'll keep it in my personal one. Uh, that repository looks fine to me. So now it's going to create a Git repository. So it's generated some source code. It's applied the build pack to add the missing files. Now it's importing this into Git. Oh, it's importing into Git. Brilliant. So now I've got a Git repository. Just to show you that I'm not cheating, let me look at that on github.com. Yay, GitHub's up. OK, brilliant. So GitHub's working. That's a good start. Um, so GitHub's, this is the repository we just created. And as you can see, there's a that's a truly amazing piece of software right there that prints a message to the screen. Uh, so that's our microservice. So we're starting small and simple, and then we're going to improve, right? So it, it's kind of crappy now, and it can only get better. Um, there's a little command here you can type in and copy and paste, JX get activity. And what this does is this tails to the log what's happening in this pipeline under the covers. So let me just explain what just happened. I typed one command, JX create quick start, that created a brand new project. Uh, imported it into GitHub, registered webhooks on GitHub so that whenever a pull request or a merge to master happens, it triggers a Jenkins pipeline. It set up a Jenkins pipeline that does CI and CD, and then because we merged to master, or pushed to master, it's now triggered a pipeline, which is now chugging along here. So now what that's going to do is it's going to release the first version of this incredible quick start. Right? So the first version is being released right now. Uh, so we can see it's chugging along. It, in fact, it's released something. Um, just about. Um, so it's building a release. Um, the, if I look at GitHub, by the way, uh, and I go back here, and I click on the Go KubeCon project, you can see on the release page, we have a release. So it's created a release in GitHub. It's tagged all the source code with the first version number. It starts at 001 and then goes up incrementally. If ever you want, you can create a Git tag. If you want to go to two or, or maybe one, go to one zero, you just do a Git tag. Um, it, so it's now tagged all the source code with that version, so we know what version 001, what it is, and how it differs in source code from 002. Um, the pipeline is then, under the covers, the pipeline has now built a Docker image, tagged that image with 001, pushed that Docker image into the Docker registry. It's then packaged up a Helm chart, installed the Helm chart into the chart repository, so anyone can now install that application on any Kubernetes cluster by typing Helm install, right? So anybody can use the app now. Then it's doing a pull request. So this is where the promotion bit kicks in. You see this thing? It says pull request. Let me click on that pull request. So we're using GitOps to do promotion. So what that means is we use a Git repository to store all of the configurations of all of the apps we use in each environment. Right? So we're basically using a single Helm chart, a blob of YAML, basically, in a Git repository for the staging environment. What this pull request does, um, you can see, by the way, the pull request has got a CI build running at the same time as well. We've generated a pull request. If I look at this pull request, don't worry too much about the detail, but this pull request is adding three lines to a YAML file. Those three lines, because we've never deployed this application in this uh, environment before, so we're adding three lines to say, add this app and add 001 of this app, and this is where, this is the repository that this app lives in. So we're doing a pull request to deploy the app into that environment, right? Uh, that pull request, I think it's closed already, has it? Yeah, it's closed already. So the pull request has merged. So what happened under the covers is that, trig that pull request triggered a CI job on the environment to verify that the YAML was fine. It could, it could find the chart in the chart repository. The YAML all looked good. So it verified the pull request was good. Then it merges. Then the merge triggers a CI job that then applies the latest master branch into staging. This is all implementation details that I'm explaining right now, but basically we're now just about ready to deploy it into staging. So what this means now is every time we do a release of any app, it's a pull request in Git. So we can see who changed what, when, and why, and how. And if ever we want to revert a version, 
we can just revert the git commit, right? It's nice and simple. If you ever want to change anything else in production, like add Prometheus or add some alerting thing or management software, you can just do a pull request on the same Git repository, right? If you want to add some custom configs or resources or config maps or secrets or whatever it is, you can do that all through this Git repository. So all of your operations and management of each environment can be in Git and use CI CD for your environments, which is nice. And awesome, the demo even worked, I can't believe it. So we've now got a live running app in staging, which if I click on that, it should work. Yay, so hello, hello Jenkins, that's brilliant. Um, so we've one command, JX create uh, quick start. Uh, we've set up a CI and CD pipeline. It's released to the staging environment already. Um, and that was pretty simple, right? We haven't had to look at any files. We didn't have to know anything about Docker. We didn't know, need to know anything about Helm or Helm YAML or Kubernetes resources or even what a Jenkins file is and how it looks. So you can kind of squint and see this as a, it's a bit like a serverless platform now. We just chuck code in and it runs. And we don't need to know that there's Kubernetes there and there's, there's clusters and there's resources and CRDs and all this other stuff. Now, I'm a huge Kubernetes fan and I would love you all to learn and use Kubernetes and learn all of its awesome power and beauty. But you don't have to do it yet, right? You can just get started, build some apps, use Kubernetes as a platform for building your apps, and over time learn more about, say, Docker files or Jenkins files or Helm. Uh, okay, so we've got an app running. Um, let's, let's change some code. Uh, so let, let's show you, we've shown you how you do uh, uh, push to master. Let me show you how a pull request works. So let's cd into the source code on my file system, which is go qcon. Yep, there we go. Uh, and let me open a, an editor, uh, VS Code. Uh, so here's the really awesome source code that we, we've got in our application that just prints something on the screen. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a branch, uh, git branch cheese. I'm going to do a check out the branch. Let's see if I can type. I'm having a reasonable typing there. This is amazing. Uh, okay, and then let's add more awesome. So let's say Jenkins X. Awesome. Okay, so we've made a change. If I do a git status, you can see I've made a change. So I'm going to do a git commit minus a, or minus a minus m. I've got. I never normally do this by hand. I've got these aliases, but I'm trying to keep it real by typing the real command, so you know what I'm doing. Uh, I did awesome. So there's a, a commit. Awesome. There we go. And I'll do a git push. Now, if I go back to my git repository. Uh, da, 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 here we go, oh, this one. So here's uh, the Git repo. Because we've just pushed a new branch, GitHub says, oh, do you want to do a pull request? So we'll go, yeah, let's do a pull request. So I'll create a pull request. So we've created a pull request because we want to add some more awesome, right? So we've edited the code, done a git commit, pushed it, created a pull request. Notice in the background, this pipeline started. So we've started a new pipeline because we've submitted a pull request. So the CI CD pipelines don't just do releases when you push to master, they also deal with pull requests. That when you make a pull request, we have another pipeline that runs that validates, is the code change valid? Does it compile? Do your test pass? Can it still run in a Docker container? Does the YAML for the Helm chart still work? And all of those other kind of things. So we, we're running a pipeline now on the pull request to validate it's working. If I look at the pull request, we'll see, you, see the pull, you can see from GitHub that the pipeline's running, the continuous integration pipeline's running. Uh, in a few moments, that should hopefully finish. Um, so that's kind of cool. We get pull requests and CI validating pull requests, but also we get the release side. We get CI and CD with Jenkins X. Um, now, the other thing we do, which is kind of cool, is on pull requests by default, we do something called preview environments. Now, if you're working on something like a web console, uh, a web app of some kind, and you do a pull request that changes the layout of some HTML, um, looking at the git diff to approve a pull request, it's kind of hard to know what does the app look like. Like I'm looking at this diff and it looks good to me, but what does it really look like in the browser? Do I like that change? What we do is we generate a preview environment so that every pull request, you can opt out of this, but every pull request by default is built and deployed in a separate environment that you can then review the changes visually or programmatically or operationally before you approve that change. Now, to go fast, we want to keep master clean. So we don't want to just merge willy-nilly stuff that goes bad. So we kind of want to push more human approval to the pull request stage, where we can validate and check the, the, uh, the change looks good before we approve it. 
And notice, oh, it's gone green. Thank, oh, that's awesome. It's gone green. Um, also notice, do you see that other little comment? It says, oh, the pull request was built, uh, and it's available in this preview environment here. So I click here, and here's the app running in a preview environment now. So we've spun up a separate environment just for that pull request. We've built and deployed that code, even though we've not merged it yet. So we've built the pull request version of the code, deployed that into a separate environment, and then linked to it on the console so you can try it out. And we can say, is there awesome there? Yeah, there's definitely awesome there. That looks good enough to me. So now we can say, hey, well, let's merge this. That, that, that looks good. Let's merge. That's enough awesome for me for today. Um, so we've merged it. Now we've merged it. If I click back to this screen again, you'll see now another pipeline is going to kick off because we've merged the master now. So now we've merged, merged that change to master. We've committed to going forward with that change. We've merged it into master. So now master is going to release version 002. Yeah? So that's CI and CD, that's pull requests and releasing, all automated. You didn't have to write a single page of Jenkins file. You didn't have to touch a Docker file. It's all just done for you, right? Which is pretty cool. So that's CI, CD. Um, there's a bunch of different commands to create new projects. Um, if you use Spring Boot, for example, there's a JX create Spring that uh, automates all of the Spring initializer stuff that lets you spin up brand new microservices with Spring, which is really, really slick. Uh, it's pretty much the quickest way of get, getting started with a Spring app. Um, and you can also import any projects. If you just have some source code on your laptop, type JX import, and you can just import that straight into uh, Jenkins X. So that's the basics of CI and CD. Now let's do something a little bit different. I've just about got time. Um, let's do some development. So let's do some stuff before we do a git commit. Right? Let's, let's hack some code and, and develop before we commit. So I'm going to run a command called jx uh, create dev pod. I'll leave that running in the background, by the way, so we can see 002 should go live fairly soon. Um, jx create dev pod. And this is going to create a developer pod. Now, the pipelines in Jenkins X use something called build pods, which are uh, a way of defining what Docker containers we wish to use for all of your tools. So when we're doing CI and CD, we need to say use Go or Maven or Gradle or whatever it is to build your app and package it up and use tools like Helm to package up a Helm uh, thing, use Scaffold to make Docker images and so forth. So we have a whole bunch of tools which are used to do CI and CD. We have an idea called a dev pod, which is you reuse the exact same build pods for, for building in CI and CD, but for development. So that means I get a shell where in that shell, all the same tools that the CI CD pipelines are using are available for me to develop with. So it's the exact same version of Maven, it's the exact same version of Helm and Git and, and Scaffold and all of the different tools. So I don't have to keep maintaining an install on my laptop with all the tools I need. The dev pod just has everything automatically configured for you, right? So I, you don't need to run all those tools locally. So the dev pod started, that's awesome. So if I, if I look in the current directory, I'm now in a, what that command has done is it's ran a dev pod and now opened my shell in the dev pod. So it's a bit like SSHing into a pod. So we've now got a new terminal where we can run build commands inside the Kubernetes cluster, right? So I've, I'm not running Docker Daemon on my laptop, right? I have no, in, I've kind of stopped using Docker on my laptop. It's, it's kind of horrible, really. Uh, so I can type like Docker PS now. This Docker PS is listing all of the Docker containers that's running in Kubernetes, right? I have no Docker binary on my laptop. I'm just using it in the cluster. So that's kind of cool. Um, now, one of the issues is I've no source code yet. I've just booted up an empty dev pod, right? And there's no source code in there. So what we can do is, if I go into another shell, oh, by the way, I think we, oh, it's not quite ready yet. 002 is out soon. Um, if I go into go kubecon, that was it, and I type JX sync, what JX sync is going to do is it's going to install and configure a piece of software called Ksync. Ksync is, a, is an open source tool which can synchronize source code from your laptop into a Kubernetes pod which can really help if you want to edit on your laptop in your IDE and run it inside the Kubernetes cluster. So we've started up Ksync. Um, so now if I go back to this, I'll pop that terminal back open. If I go back here and I do ls minus al, oh, it's not worked. Damn, OK, bear with me one second. I forgot to do something before the demo. Uh, I had an old Ksync. I should hopefully fix this bug soon, but just bear with me. Um, sometimes Ksync gets a bit confused. 
All right, let me try this again. If this works, it's going to be awesome, honestly. It's going to be really, really good. Let's see if this works. Oh, yay! Okay, in a moment, we should have some source code there. Any second now. Whew, that was close. Yay! Okay, there's all the source code. So here's the source code in the pod in Kubernetes, right? So we, we've got a container in Google Cloud with Maven and uh, Go and a bunch of other, uh, well, no Maven, but where it's got Go and it's got uh, KubeCuddle and it's got Helm and it's got Scaffold installed. And there's a little shell script in there, which I'll cat first so you can see it. It's a tiny little thing that just runs make and then runs this tool called Reflex that just watches this for source code changes and then just runs make again. So if I type watch, what this is going to do now is it's going to build the Go binary for the, from the source code. Then the make file is going to make a Docker image using scaffold. So you can see it was quite quick that, but it made the Docker image, it's pushed it to the registry, and it's deployed it with Helm. So that's kind of cool. Um, and then if I do, in another window here, I'll do this one, JX get app. JX get app shows you all of the apps you're running and each environment they're running inside. So you can see I'm running something in staging. Oh, 002 is in staging, awesome. So 002 is in staging, so that should be awesome. Yeah, that's definitely awesome. Um, and then you can see this, you see this edit uh, namespace here, edit? Uh, so that's where we're running our edit version. Now right now that's the same string, right, it's the same string. Um, but what we're going to do now, now is we're going to try edit the code. Um, just before I do that, I'm going to open the terminal. I always forget where open terminal is in the thingy. And I'm going to copy and paste this URL here. If this demo works, I'll be amazed, but let, let's see how it goes. So I've got a little shell script that's just going to curl the public URL of this service. So it's just a little shell script that does a curl every couple of seconds so I can see the output uh, of the code. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this demo really awesome. Uh, so I've changed some source code on my laptop. This is where we see how well the internet works. Um, Oh, it's worked, awesome. So what I did is I changed some source code in uh, VS Code. VS Code then automatically saved the source file. Ksync then synchronized that into the build pod. Reflex in the build pod then detected the source code had changed and rebuilt the Docker image and then redeployed it. And then do you see the really awesome output? So we've changed the code on my laptop in my desktop IDE and had it running live in Google Cloud within a couple of seconds, right? That's pretty old. This only worked at the weekend, right? That was, this is a very recent thing. But it's a really awesome way of developing in the cloud, right? If ever you've tried to develop Docker on your laptop and done Docker push on your laptop and you sat there for five hours while it pulls everything from the internet, um, you kind of want to develop in the cloud as much as you can, right? Um, we all, we're all trying to go as fast as we can, and minimizing waste is a good option. So don't run things on your laptop on a pretend kind of pretend version of Kubernetes. Use the real production Kubernetes cluster or development cluster and build and run everything there. So you're always using the same version of Linux, you're always using the same containers, the same version of Docker, the same persistence, the same load balancer, the same disk. You're always testing on as close to production as possible, right? Which means you go faster. You don't waste time fixing a threading bug that only works on, that uh, only breaks on Mac OS or something, right? Run everything in Linux and containers all the time. Okay, that was pretty good. So just to recap what, we, what we've done so far. Um, one command creates a new project, sets up CI and CD, it gives us pull requests, it gives us preview environments so we can validate any change before we merge. When we merge, a release is then automatically um, promoted using GitOps. So everything's versioned in Git. Uh, Git is basically your database and where everything is stored, so everything's versioned and you know what, what's going on. Um, then we can use dev pods, if you wish, to edit code on your laptop, synchronize it to the cloud and redeploy on the fly. Um, this magic is using under the covers, a, a project called, that Google open source called Scaffold. So you can actually just run this yourself in Scaffold, just type Scaffold dev, and that basically rede watches everything uh, in the source code and redeploys on the fly whenever that changes, right? which is pretty awesome. So that's most a quick overview of Jenkins X. Um, here's a couple more things. So uh, I work for a company called Cloudbees. We're like the, the, Jenkins, the commercial Jenkins company. 
Um, everything you've just seen is all completely open source. It's all mostly Apache license, but it's all open source. Uh, you can download it and play with it. My demo's almost finished, so feel free to download the Jenkins X right now and, and spin up a cluster and have a go. Um, so everything's open source up to now. I'm just going to show you a couple of things which aren't open source, which are like commercial add-ons we're working on. This is an early preview, but I just thought I'd show you it. Um, so we have a chatbot that watches Jenkins X, and whenever a pipeline starts, it updates the chatbot. So if I, um, let me do a quick commit. Um, which shall I mean? Let's go into this one. CD go, go QCon, and then I'll do a git commit. Minus M, minus M. Oh, minus M something. Git push. Uh, then if I go back to my browser really quickly, uh, da, 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 and I'll do a pull request. Wrong window, this one. Uh, if I go there, and then I need to go into the cheese branch, and then I click the pull request thingy. We still need a pull request command in Jenkins X to avoid this uh, thing. Okay, there's a pull request, cool, and I'm going to cheat. I'm going to merge it straight away. I'm, I'm such a bad man. Don't, don't look. Um, so I've merged straight to master. I haven't even tested it. I mean, that's terrible. Never, never do that. Never do that. Um, so while that's chugging along, we'll see, we should see um, a pipeline trigger. Um, I'll keep talking while, while this runs, but you should see basically the, the release pipeline should trigger, and you'll see it all kind of tinker through on Slack. Now, one of the kind of nice things is if, if you're on a team and you're making loads of apps, you can kind of see releases fly by. And whenever there's a release, you can see, for example, oh, hey, that this application is in staging there. Oh, that, what's the pull request you just raised? It's that one. So it gives you all the different links so you can link from chat straight into what your pipeline is, what's the build logs, what's the Jenkins console, uh, who did what when, why is it released, what's the diff, what commits were in which release, and all those, those kind of things. So I'll leave that one going for a minute. And um, while well, that's chugging along, um, another thing we're building is a, a new UI. Um, I don't know if you love or hate the Jenkins UI, but we've we found that once we start doing microservices, so we're using Jenkins X to build Jenkins X, so we're using Jenkins X all the time. And once you have like 20 repos and lots of different teams going really fast releasing all the time, you have lots of pipelines, lots of environments. It's kind of hard to keep all this stuff in your head. Like, I've got five environments now, and I've got like 20 pipelines running, and people are doing pull requests left, right, and center. So we found ourselves with like 50 browser tabs open, trying to keep track of everything that's going on. So we're building this kind of single pane of glass that just gives you a nice, simple way of looking at everything that's happening. So I can see my um, staging environment, and for each staging environment, for each app in each, oh, oh, excuse me, for each app in staging, I can see. Um, all the activities that are happening on that build, I can see a pipeline is running right now, for example. So 002 is released. We've triggered 003. So 003 is being released right now, and the link should appear fairly soon to link to 003. So I know what's happening on that app. And here's some existing pull requests that's going on. So I can look at the different pull requests, and each of these I can look at the apps as well. So it's a nice, simple way of looking at everything that's happening, looking at what pods are being used by what app, what resources are being used, and so on and so forth. And fairly soon, we hope to have a nice, simple uh, preview UI for if you want to do manual promotion. And what we kind of hope is eventually people automate everything, right? We want, we want most things to be automated. Um, out of the box, Jenkins X automatically promotes to staging, but we've left promotion to production as a manual thing by default. You can edit this. You can add and remove environments whenever you wish. So your team might want six environments. You might want a staging a pre-prod, a production, you might want a uh, soap testing, load testing environment. You can have as many environments as you wish. Each environment, you can say if it's manual promotion or automatic. If it's automatic promotion, the pipeline for your app will promote your app for you. If it's manual, you can use JX promote on the command line to manually do a promotion. Uh, we're hoping in this UI to have a really slick promotion wizard so that if, if you do go with manual promotion, you can just use this nice little UI and just click promote, and it's kind of nice and simple, and so you don't have to use the command line all the time. Um, so that's almost it for today. Um, I had to shut, uh, qu uh, speed this uh, up quite a bit because I thought this was an hour. I was going to spend an hour talking about all this stuff, but it's, it's 35 minutes, so I apologize for that. Uh, we've just about got time for questions. Any, anybody got any questions about Jiggy 6? Sure. How heavily tied in is it to GitHub? Uh, great question. How heavily tied in is it to GitHub? The, uh, we have a Git plugin that lets us use different Git providers. Today, GitHub and GitHub Enterprise work awesome, and we have support for uh, Bitbucket and GitLab 
and Gittier, but they're not quite awesome and working yet. We're working on it, and, and we hope it works soon, but right now it's not quite there. But if you want to use a different Git provider, just let us know and, and help us get it working. Yeah. Uh, and thank you. Cheers. <laughs>